the goal of the Russian narrative, uh, I think, was from the beginning uh, something that was designed by the deep state for purposes of using against candidate Trump, ultimately, when he lost. Remember, during the time that everything was going on in 2016, most of the presumptive, presumption which we've seen in all the disclosures of the issues relating to the texts, the stroke texts with his girlfriend, uh, the Comey background, everybody presumed Hillary Clinton was going to be the winner. So why then did they use the narrative in the way they have? Because it's all they had. Once President Trump was elected, they had to go with a narrative which was designed to be a stake in the heart of candidate Trump after the fact. And frankly, all the things we've now learned over the past year, we would never have known, not in the form we know now, because no one would have had the courage. I'm sure, Jim, you would have had the courage, but you would not have had the support of the White House mm -hmm. to go in and do the hard work of tearing it all apart. So we have to now look at how this was possible. How was it possible for these senior members of the intelligence community to manipulate not only the media, but then by extension, the public opinion, the thinking. That's where the critical issues we have to address come forth. Now, one of the numbers, I'm, I'm terrible at math, but this is a number I'm going to throw out, and I talked about it with Vince this morning. According to my sources, in 2016 and 2017, 71%, 71% of the foreign counterintelligence budget of the FBI was diverted from looking at threats, looking at foreign counterintelligence, to focus only on Clinton and Trump to absolve Clinton and to convict Trump. Now, what, what do you call that when an official element of the U.S. government diverts money, appropriated funds, for purposes of defending the American people and turning it against domestic targets? That is the deep state. That's what we're talking about here. This is not something that's fictional. It's not tinfoil hat stuff. We can look at the stats. We can go back and do a study of what we've seen and figure it out. And that's where we're at right now. That's why what we're doing today, I think, is so critical for the dialogue to the American people and to make sure that this continues. So how did this all happen? One of the things I've noticed over the years, and I'll be very quick about this, is that the other side has continued to make investments in people. Essentially, they, they have put uh, political capital into getting their people into the system early and seeing them through. Lois Lerner being one of those political appointees who converted over to being a government employee. Another one I was just doing a little research on before we went on the air, uh, you know, Jamie Gorelick. Jamie Gorelick was a DOJ uh, lawyer, and somehow she ends up over at Fannie Mae, a mortgage company making $26 million. So what, how does, this is what the deep state does. They actually find methods of trying to support the individuals they see as politically reliable and pushing them through. So now we're seeing, we've been experiencing over the past year, the in-state results of investments of the left trying to do things to put people in place for purposes of maintaining control of nation-state capabilities for purposes of political gain. That simply is what I believe in that it is. So uh, all is not lost. Uh, I've heard from sources that, not the, that when they did the raid on Mr. Cohen's office in New York, President Trump's attorney, there were some FBI agents who refused to participate. Once they figured out what was going on, they, they, they stopped. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to those men because those men know what's been going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. There are people who resist us all the time. And one, two last points. Chuck Todd said Sunday on the 22nd, uh, Sunday morning, uh, prepping for his show, Meet the Who's Press. Who's Chuck Todd? Chuck, Chuck Todd, uh, NBC uh, correspondent, uh, political operative correspondent, talked on, I was watching this, uh, this this past Sunday morning. This is what he said. D.C. is paralyzed from the Russian, in, Russian investigation. What he meant was the deep state is paralyzed by the Russian investigation. It hasn't gone the way they anticipated, so now they don't know what to do. And I think that's why you see more and more desperate me measures from them side. And the last point I want to make, and this is something pertinent to all of us because we've all known uh, what the government can do and not do regarding technology and intelligence collection. The U.S. government has immense technology and intelligence capabilities, immense. Uh, as someone who's used these for purposes of trying to defend the country, I'm very much aware of what they are. But these are ambivalent to the user. That is why it's so critical that these technologies and capabilities remain controlled by people who are objective and essentially are willing and able to fulfill their oath of office and try to remain above reproach relating to political maneuvers and enticements.